Hi guys, this is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> Today we are going to be looking at Job chapter 10. If you haven't read this chapter for yourself, please stop this recording and read the chapter for yourself. Understand what's happening in this chapter and then you can come and listen to my summary and listen to the lessons that we have gotten from this chapter. The short on the long and short of this chapter is Job saying, "You created me." Kumbe, all along, you wanted to just find sin in me so that you can destroy me. <laughs> Basically, that's what this whole chapter is saying. All right, I'm going to read it real quick and I'm reading from the easy to read version. And this is what he says. This is Job speaking. And he says, I hate, I hate my own life. And he's speaking to God. So I will complain freely. I am very bitter. So now I will speak. I will say to God, don't just say I am guilty. Tell me what I, you have against me. Basically, he's telling God, Tell me what I did. And then he says, "Do you enjoy hurting me? Do you enjoy ignoring me while smiling at what evil people say? Do you have human eyes? Do you see things the way people do? Is your life as short as ours? Is your life as short as as a man's life? You look for my wrong and search for my sin. You know I am innocent, but no one can save me from your power." Your hand made me and shaped my body, but now you are closing around me and squeezing me to death. Remember that you molded me like clay. Will you turn against? You will turn me into clay again? You poured me out like milk. You spun me around and squeezed me like someone making cheese. You put me together with bones and muscles, and then you clothed me with skin and flesh. You gave me life, and you were very kind to me. You cared for me and watched over my spirit. But this is what you hid in your heart, basically saying, "Oh, kumbe, atoki niumba." This is what you had in your mind. Now I know what you were planning for me. If I sinned, you would be watching me so that you could punish me for doing wrong. If I Sin I am guilty and you should be and should be cast but even when I am innocent I cannot lift up my head I am so ashamed because of all the troubles that I have if I have any success and feel proud you hunt me down like a lion and show your power over me you bring witnesses after witnesses to prove that I am wrong again and again you show your anger to as you send army after army against me so why did you just let me why did you let me be born I wish I had died before anyone saw me. I wish I, w- I had j- never lived. I wish they had carried me from my mother's womb straight to the grave. My life is almost finished, so leave me alone. Let me enjoy the little time I have. I'm going soon to the land of no return, the place of death and darkness. That land, that land of darkness, night, of shadows and confusion, where even the light is darkness. Oh my goodness. This is yet another sad sad chapter of just you know Job letting out his frustration letting out his pain his anguish to God first I like the fact that he is speaking to God he's not speaking to just his friends or their friends are there and they are hearing him speak but he's addressing his maker he's addressing his God he's addressing his Lord this Lord that he has faithfully served this Lord that he has faithfully uh you know remained blameless to and he is speaking and speaking his anguish i like the fact that job is real <clears throat> sometimes i feel like as christians we want to go to god with such put together prayers and such put together words we want to say really nice words as we are praying to god without not without necessarily expressing the anguish the pain the frustration the oh god why are you doing this to me you know kind of prayers and i like the fact that job is real and he's just like yani stop saying i'm guilty tell me what it is that i did cuz me i think i am innocent are you enjoying hurting me are you enjoying ignoring me and smiling at people who are evil at the things that they're saying um you know you made me and you shaped me and you you know you created me only so that you can look out for my sins so then you can crush me you know like he really is real and i think if there's anything that i learn from this chapter is to go to god in our realness in our vulnerability in our broken spirit to just go and say aki god you are crushing me this is painful i don't understand what is happening but i am keeping this communication line open i like the fact that he keeps the communication line open even when he's going through the hardest 
time of his life. Even when he feels like he's being squeezed to death. But he he constantly is speaking to God. He's constantly telling God how he's feeling. Even if it just sounds like venting. Even if it sounds like complaining. I pray that we would go to God in our hardest times. And just tell him how you feel. Just tell him, hey Lord, this one, this one you have you have really pressed me. This one I don't think is a test that I can manage or please give me a way out of this. But it is good to just go to God and just tell him as we feel it. No sugarcoating it. No trying to look for words that look, you know, Holy Spirit filled. Just saying it as we feel it. As we feel it. And keeping the communication lines between ourselves and God open, especially in the times of trouble. Thank you so much for listening, guys, and see you next week.